Today on Tau Flader Mouse, we'll be testing three variants of the same slug. These samples come all the way from the prison island of Australia from our favorite prisoner, Denver. Now, even though these three slugs look exactly the same, they do vary in weight and center of gravity. If you remember the video of the moose wad cutters that we did a couple years ago, you may notice a slight resemblance here. Denver asked moose molds in the United States to make him a 73 caliber mold. They wouldn't do it for some reason, so he ended up contracting it out to a company in Russia where he ultimately got his mold from. The mold came with different center pins, which allows him to make different weight slugs. And finally, a third pin makes these even more Russian, allowing him to use the famous Azot wad, which is used on a lot of different Russian slugs. The wad stays attached to the slug to help stabilize it. Now we did some preliminary water drop test, kind of a hydrodynamic test, dropping the slugs down a column of water. The 535 grain slug started out pretty good, but it started yawing. The 630 grain slug did a little better, but as it got to the bottom of the water column, it started to yaw a little bit too. We saw the best results using the 702 grain slug with the attached wad. You could see how it self-stabilized there and started flying perfectly straight. The first test will be showing the 535 grain slug. You can see how I made this uh, little plug here to fill in that cavity so that the wad doesn't get shoved up inside there. That keeps things very compact so that we can fit this all into a two and three quarter inch hole. Denver has sent us some rather heavy rounds. He calls them the Manet ball. They're, uh, they're a lot like a flat nosed, big heavy giant cylinder. Jeff's gonna show you the tabletop. It'll explain everything. Why am I even yakking? <laughs> He's got three different weights here, however. 535 grains, 630 grains, and a 702 grain, big old whopper. I'm gonna save my shoulder for this last one. Put it last. We're gonna shoot them at some distances out here for you today to see if we can actually stretch them out. One of the complaints we always get here on the show, you guys should have shot them at 20 yards, 30 yards, 50 yards. Guess what we're shooting today? 20, 30, and 50 yards. No, just 30. Oh, we, we marked off a 50 yard mark out there. We'll do 50 if these do well enough All right. at 30. We wanna do a grouping test at 30. Yes. And then if, if we feel, if they're stable, I mean, there's a chance they'll be, they might tumble. There's a chance they're just, my load data is completely garbage. <laughs> well, that would never happen. Because I, he, I, I don't know if he ever tested these things. It's like, here, test them out. I don't have any load data for you, but here, Jeff, you figure it out. Thanks. So they're heavy, heavy rounds. We're going to send them out of the Beretta 1301 fan favorite uh, 12 gauge shotgun here. It has a burrish red dot sight on the top, so we should get a little more precision out of that than, than my big old clunky iron sights that I used before. So without further ado, Let's start out with that red one, which is 500 and... The red one's 630 grains. Do you want six, to start at the bottom? Which is the lightest? 535 grains, and that is the yellow tip. Okay, okay, we'll start with, yeah, start with those. All right, smells like Vegemite. Let's get to it. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go, big shot, 535. Oh, it was late. Yeah. Click, boom. Okay, test two. Right, you're ready, I'll try it. Okay, I'm ready. All right, here we go. Uh oh, you hear that? Yeah. Bloop. It it blooped it out. Okay, what's going on? All right, what I've done is ejected <laughs> around onto the ground. <laughs> so we have gone back to the 535 grain into the rifled barrel, fully rifled barrel. We're gonna see if we can't get a better performance out of these things from full rifling, because rifling it probably it won't, it will probably end up using a steel rod and a sledgehammer to try to get that slug back out, but. Yeah, they did kind of poop out of there earlier. We've put a water jug down there at 20 yards. Let's see if we can blow it up. Maybe this will work. Because <laughs> got to. Rifling makes everything better. That's right. Oh, 
drop off the water jug. Okay. Now we had terrible results using 30 grains of steel powder for this projectile. It seemed to work okay for the rifled shotgun for some reason. Maybe we build up a little more pressure using that. Steel powder is normally used for heavy steel shot, one and a half ounce, two ounce, and I thought one and a quarter ounce, it may work, but obviously did not work very reliably. So we're trying these 535s. We had two rounds kind of just barely poop out the end of the barrel. One went way high and left, didn't seem to have any energy. In fact, it lit late. The trigger went click, boom. So uh, there was something wrong there. And then this last one, we heard a little bloop out the front of the muzzle and we saw some of the components of the, sh of the slug flying down range, bouncing down range. So and we got a 276, 276 <laughs> feet per second on the chronograph, which is probably a, a pretty accurate. <laughs> so something's going on with these. Uh, we actually also got one that didn't even uh, strike the primer. These are uh, used holes, recycled holes. So we're going to move up to the 630 grain in new holes, and we're going to give these a try and see if these don't uh, fire off. God, I hope, I hope this, you know, it's the problem with using steel, if you're made for a real heavy projectile, and hopefully this is heavy enough to light it off. Yeah. Don't well, like that power. I should have went with long shot. And, and, we got one and, chambered up, ready to go. Yeah. And so uh, let's give it a try downrange and see if it fires off. For the 630 grain slug, we'll be using pretty much the exact same components we used for the 535, including 30 grains of Alliance steel. Hopefully with this heavier slug, we'll be able to get proper ignition. Okay, I'm ready when you are. All right, here we go, 630. Now that shot like a regular shotgun shell. Well, the shell lit off fine, and he hit the cardboard target, but look at the crazy trajectory of that thing. And it's more or less mimicking what we saw in our water drop test. It managed to fly nose first the whole time, it just looked like it was on a roller coaster track. I don't think I've ever seen anything fly that wildly before. Here we go. Shot two. Round number two, 630. The dot was dead on when I lit it off. 11.06. Good kill, good kill. They're flying a little goofy. We're going to try them now. We're going to move over to the Remington. We also failed to get another uh, primer strike. Yeah. That was the second time. So we're going to move over to the Remington, the old tried and true. With the full rifling. Full rifled barrel. That means rifled from all the way from back here at the chamber. The <laughs> um, standard old rifle sights on this thing. And uh, we're going to try out the rest of these other two. This, this is kind of a good example of how, uh, you know, people are like, why is the target only 10 yards away? Yeah. Because... They've never been tested before, and 10 yards is a good starting point. It captures the rounds no matter what. It's yeah, not, it's it, not it, could very, be a, it could be two inches off or whatever, but we're going to hit the target. Yeah, it's not a very good measure of accuracy, but we hit the target. We can tell what they're doing, and we can take a look at them over here on the Kronos high-speed camera. But 30 yards, we're barely hitting cardboard with one round so far. So now with the Remington, we're going to give it a try. The other two 630 grain, see what they do. See, maybe it's the gun. I don't know. That one slapped the target. I can see a hole. Yeah. Okay, last one, full rifling. When you're ready. I'm ready. Here we go. 11.38. The use of the full rifle barrel gave these slugs the spin that they needed for stability. I'm just not sure if full rifle barrels are allowed in Australia or not, so this may not be much use to Denver. Ideally, you want a slug to be universal. The ability to shoot it through smoothbore, full rifling, or even a rifle choke, so you're not limited by having to use a certain type of gun. So 
So our first 630 grain round went over here to the right. You can tell by the shape of the hole that it was tumbling when it went through the cardboard. Rounds number two and three of the 630 grains right over the top of the cardboard and we saw them splash back here on the safety berm. However, as soon as we put it through the Remington with a fully rifled bore, round number one went high and right, uh, high and left, just a little bit though, about 11 o'clock up here. And then the second one, just now, our last 630 grain actually came pretty damn close, uh, right next to it. So these are a little more consistent, and I think that's a little more indicative of what we really got going on here. You can also tell by the perfectly round holes on this, that these things cookie cuttered their way through nose first. They weren't tumbling in any way, so they are, it's almost like laser cut in that cardboard they punched through so clean. So accurate because of the rifling, you be the judge. Rifling usually makes things better. Makes everything At least better. in this case. I had rifling on toast this morning. <laughs> totally made it better. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, we're gonna move over to the 700 grain, 702 grain. This is the shoulder smashing 5000. Uh, we're gonna run it out of the smooth bore. This one's got a little attached tail to help with stability. It's got the Russian Azot tail wad on there. Yeah, so it's always good to get a little tail on a, on a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> we're going to throw it in here. We've just dialed this thing in to make sure that the red dot is on. So we, we, we ruled out any kind of uh, mechanical launching platform problems. Let's go ahead and get, we're gonna, we move the table up to 20 yards and let's give this 702 grain shoulder smasher a try. Things loaded, yep. running. 702 grains, 20 yards. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go, on the red dot. Oh my. Oh, on the red dot. Oh my. I see that looked promising. I see an impact about 11 o'clock. Ten twenty-six. Wow, still a little bit high and left, so... was 12 o'clock right over the top of the paper. Yeah, edge of the pink, 11 o'clock. This is 20 yards here. 20 yards with, I don't know, four rounds here. We started up here, as you can tell, number one, we were a little bit high and left. I actually adjusted the red dot sights unbeknownst to Jeff um, after number two. So we walked them a little closer to the center and then this was our last round, so. I think we're in there. Red dot, 20 yards, shooting a big old slug that has a, a tail waggling behind it. It's gonna tear some big giant holes in there. The Azot wads provided excellent stability for these out of a smooth bore. That's the good news. Unfortunately, the Azot wads can be difficult to get at times. They're not in stock all the time, and shipping for them is very expensive. Personally, I was really rooting for the, the slugs without the Azot wads just so that Denver didn't have to deal with that. He could source all the components locally in Australia and not have to deal with expensive wads. Okay, now we're uh, full rifling with the 700 grain with the tail wad. Right. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Oh, you gotta load it. That's true. I didn't really that <laughs> All right, here we go again. Oh, I got him. Yes, sometimes rifling does make things a little better. Look how stable that slug is. But that's not always the case. We've seen a lot of examples where using full rifling created more problems, more complexities than what it was trying to solve. But you don't know until you try and test. We're just maybe just on the light side of this powder, or, you know, for this powder for some of these slugs. For those lighter ones, the 535s and the 630s. Yeah, it was a little light. The you 7, know, the 702 seemed to do okay. Yeah, and, yeah. And uh, we actually we got them all to light off even out out of this one, didn't we? Yeah. So, yeah, those heavier rounds did well. They kick a lot, but what are you gonna do? Anyway, it's interesting nonetheless. Even though these aren't perfect, um, still interesting, still a fun time, and still better than watching Taylor Swift videos here on YouTube. So, <laughs> we thank you guys for stopping by. If you're really super bored and very disappointed after this swing by OG's Danger Show, um, I'm going to be doing a review next on this Beretta 1301 Tactical. Everybody's been asking for that, so I think that's coming up next here on the Danger Show. So, 
Otherwise, thanks for stopping by and we'll see you guys on the next video.